Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzard K, and today we are looking at a crazy case out of Aurora, Colorado, where a man murdered his wife by lacing her smoothies with poison. Let's get into it. Usually, when women are asked, what kind of qualities would you look for in a man? You might hear answers like, he has to make me laugh. He needs to have ambition to be successful, to be able to take care of me and our potential kids. And he needs to have empathy. Well, 45-year-old James Jim Craig seemed just like that guy. And in fact, everybody that knew him described him as funny, passionate, hardworking, and this man had his own dental practice in Aurora, Colorado. 45-year-old James and 43-year-old Angela had just celebrated 22 years of marriage, although it had been a rocky road. Angela had threatened to leave him multiple times, even though they were a generally happy family with a lovely home and they had six children together, ranging between the age of 8 and 20. Somehow, whenever Angela wanted to leave, He convinced her to stay. And so she did, believing that she was absolutely doing the right thing. James had put Angela through hell over the years. He was a gambler. He was a risk taker, which some friends and family have also said. He was a self-proclaimed porn addict who had multiple affairs and had even drugged Angela in the past. Why, you might ask? He said it was because he wanted to take his own life. So he drugged Angela so that she wouldn't be able to intervene and help him. His plan for taking his own life was to go into the bathroom and inject a lethal substance into his arm. That never happened. But what did happen was that Angela was drugged. And so based on the events of March 2023, one can see why she had suspicions that something was a little bit off. It's just that James was such a master manipulator and he coated everything with humor and feigned empathy that Angela didn't realize what he was actually doing to her. So before we dive in, Just remember, the ways that he manipulated Angela, other than obviously gaslighting her, was religion. He was hiding behind the facade of being a leader in the Mormon church. Empathy, which in hindsight, one can tell, wasn't real at all. Humor, he literally made a joke out of everything. And deflection. When Angela's condition was worsening, he seemed to deflect the conversation which we'll get into when we go over all the text messages between them. So here's what happened. On March 1st, until March 5th, Angela Craig went to visit her sister in Utah, and her sister said she seemed perfectly normal and healthy. Angela actually prioritized her fitness and worked out a lot, and she really liked her protein smoothies and pre-workout smoothies. James took advantage of that. While Angela was visiting her sister in Utah, James was very busy on the internet, but not just on his normal computer at his dental practice. Oh no, he went into exam room number nine at the dental practice at odd hours, sometimes on his day off because the practice was only open from Monday to Thursday. Sometimes he was there on a Friday doing creepy things. And what he did was start a brand new email address and then hit the Google search bar. He was looking for the deadliest poisons, the deadliest plants, how much arsenic it would take to kill a human, what type of poisons would not be detected in an autopsy, and all of that. While at the same time, booking a trip for his mistress to come and visit him. His mistress was an orthodontist based out of Texas, and she actually had booked a trip to visit him 
between March 8th and 10th, and she did go there to Aurora, Colorado, to spend time with him while Angela, his wife, was in hospital, suffering the symptoms of what James was poisoning her with. There was a second trip planned, March 16th to 20th. The thing is that James Craig was arrested on Sunday, March 18th, the same day that Angela died, and he was charged with first-degree murder. So what did he do? Well, he went on Amazon, and believe it or not, one can order arsenic to add to one's element collection on Amazon. I find that really baffling. I see some of the reviews say the same. It's only about $13 or so, and you get a little bottle with arsenic in it. Now, arsenic is extremely toxic, super poisonous, can kill a human. And that was James's plan. So he ordered the arsenic using his new fake Gmail account. And when it arrived, he started putting that in Angela's smoothies. Already then, she started feeling really dizzy and nauseous and she couldn't understand her symptoms, but she wasn't deteriorating fast enough for James. And so he hit the internet streets again and started looking up more potent poisons. This time, ordering cyanide. Now, when he ordered the cyanide, the company that he'd ordered it from, because he used his dental practice as the motivation for why he needed this, total liar. Just to break it to you, this guy's a total liar all the time. He said that he needed to experiment with it for facial reconstructive surgery or something and signed off on this using his fake Gmail account instead of his business account. Still, they shipped out the cyanide. And he had it shipped to his dental practice specifically to arrive on a Friday when it was supposed to be closed. He'd actually told a staff member when the package didn't arrive that day and he expressed his frustration on email. He told a staff member, when that package arrives, don't you open it now. Now the thing is, when the package arrived, someone opened it and they saw in there it said potassium cyanide. So they looked it up and they're like, oh my word, but these are the symptoms that he's saying his wife has which raised all the red flags. Now he started poisoning Angela on March 6th, 2023. And by March 18th, she was dead. He'd looked up three poisons and planned to have them all. Arsenic, cyanide, and oleander. The oleander never arrived because at that point, investigators had intercepted the package that was on its way and stopped him from getting his hands on it. Sadly as well, at that point, Angela had died. Let's have a quick look at a Summerbrook Dental Group promo video so that you can just see who we're dealing with and see the smiley facade. And then let's read through that arrest affidavit together. My name is Dr. Jim Craig and I practice at Summerbrook Dental Group. My approach to dentistry begins with sincerely listening to the patient and wanting to find out more about where they're coming from and what they're looking for and what they want. One of the things that makes Summerbrook Dental so unique is our ability and willingness to comfortably treat patients who have high anxiety about dental procedures. Most dentists don't want to see those types of patients in their practice because it's difficult and it can be hard to overcome that anxiety. I thrive on that though. I love the challenge. I love creating an environment where people are surprised at how comfortable they are. I like to put together some options for the patient because dentistry can be expensive, dentistry can be scary, dentistry can be uncomfortable. Not every treatment plan can fit every patient. And so I want to let the patients know what's possible so that when they leave this office, they feel like they own their own treatment plan. And that way we make sure that we're giving the patients exactly what they want. The feedback that we receive from patients is overwhelmingly positive. We have such a great team here that I don't have to worry too much about what everybody's experience is going to be because it's always good. The most satisfying thing about my job is when a patient leaves and they say, wow, that was a lot easier than I expected it to be. I love to make dentistry easy for people. I'm going to start with an end in mind and first read you the conclusion from this arrest affidavit. Then we'll go back to the top and read from the top. It is 54 pages long. A lot of the pages are the text messages between James and Angela and also James's messages to a friend where you can see his venomous, freaking narcissistic, manipulative character come out. So conclusion, 
Throughout this investigation, your affiant has spoken to numerous people who have provided insight into Angela and James Craig's relationship. Not one person has suggested or even seen any source of suicidal ideations from Angela. James had provided those statements to the Department of Human Services employees who, after hearing those statements, felt that James was trying to make a point to have some source of the cover-up story to prevent his incrimination. We're going to get into that, but yes, of course, he victim blamed. James has made varied statements to various audiences. He told the Department of Human Services that Angela was suicidal, and he had saved her many times but never reported it. James had told fellow employees that his marriage was failing and he was in financial turmoil. He'd already filed for bankruptcy once in the past and was ready to file for bankruptcy again. The question is, did he take out life insurance on her? Because that's also the usual that we see in cases like this, right? I think, though, he was dumb enough to do all of this just to start a new life with his mistress. Which, based on my research, it looks like she's married with two kids too, so I'm not too sure what their plan was. He has also been recently communicating with a woman named about what appears to be a sexually intimate relationship. It appears James was flying this woman to Denver while his wife and mother of his children was dying in the hospital. I wonder how she feels now, knowing that he was getting all hot and sweaty with her while his wife was dying in the hospital from all the poison that he'd given her. Ladies, remember that if you're having an affair and you're fighting for that man, and you just want him to leave his wife. He's the prize. That freaking cheating loser is the prize. Do you really want that? No. In totality, this investigation has proven that James has gone to great lengths to try and end his wife's life. On February 27, 2023, he created a new Gmail account, jimandwaffles at gmail.com, which he only used in dental room number nine with his practice at 14991 East Hamden Avenue, Suite 370. This email account was not found on his cell phone, his laptop, nor on Angela's phone. While using this account, he searched multiple undetectable poisons and eventually purchased crystalline metalloid arsenic from Amazon.com. After buying this poison, he received an email from about her intention to fly to Denver, Colorado for her first trip, March 8th to 10th, 2023, because remember, these two idiots planned another love affair trip together. On March the 4th, 2023, the arsenic was delivered to James's mailbox at his home residence. On March the 4th, 2023, James received another email from... For this trip that was scheduled 16th to 20th with a flight plan. On March the 5th, 2023, Angela returned home from a trip to Utah. On March 6th, 2023, Angela was admitted to Parker Adventist Hospital as she complained that her head felt funny and she was dizzy and her eyes were not focusing. She continued that she did not feel right in her head and that her body was responding slowly. These symptoms were consistent with some of the symptoms from arsenic. These symptoms, per the CDC, were vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, dehydration, altered mental state, or organ failure. Angela was released from the hospital on March 6, 2023. James then ordered oleandrin, one milligram, in the quantity of three, on March the 6th, 2023. These items were intercepted by FedEx and were not delivered to James. On March the 8th, 2023, according to the flight plans from February 27, 2023, The mistress came to Denver, Colorado. James then ordered Sigma 201810-25G potassium cyanide from Midland Scientific with a request to have the items overnight. He requested to pick them up on March 9th, 2023 specifically. There were delays in the shipment due to verifying his credentials. James responded while Angela was in the hospital that he could complete the form and that the potassium cyanide was needed for surgery. James showed impatience in the email string between him and the Midland Scientific employee. James then told his employee that he had a package coming to the office on March 13th, 2023, and that the package was personal. That package was accidentally opened by an employee named, and that's redacted, and they took the package and repackaged it knowing James requested it not to be opened. As they repackaged the item, she saw it was potassium cyanide. She never saw this potassium cyanide within the business again. It should have remained in the business if it was truly used for surgery, as James alleged. On March 14th, 2023, Angela was released from the hospital and returned home. On March 15th, that's 
Literally the next day, she got so sick, Angela returned to the hospital at approximately 11 a.m. This time, Angela was at University Hospital Anschutz. Angela started to suffer from a severe seizure and was intubated. Angela suffered from a lack of oxygen and no pupil reaction and began to have inner cranial pressure. This led Angela to the medical intensive care unit, where she was on life support and did not regain brain activity. James was known to make Angela protein shakes regularly and had administered many to her. It was believed he had provided Angela with a poison through these shakes. Per the CDC, the more severe symptoms include high or low blood pressure, loss of consciousness, lung injury, seizures, coma, and death. James has ordered multiple poisons that were not known to have been located during the searches of his residence or business. James has not attempted to speak with police regarding what occurred with his wife, but has made statements that he had the answers to what happened. James has only repeatedly asked for his phone back. Based on the totality of the investigation, James has shown the planning and intent to end his wife's life by searching for ways to kill someone undetected, providing her poisons that align with her hospitalized symptoms, and working on starting a new life with his mistress. Your affiant finds there is more than enough preliminary evidence sufficient to arrest James Craig with premeditated first-degree murder. So now let's start from the top. A complaint in writing under oath has been made and it appears that there are reasonable grounds for believing between March 6th, 2023 through March 15th, 2023 at 6795 South Robertsdale Way in the city of Aurora in Arapahoe County and the state of Colorado, James Tolliver Craig, date of birth 02-1178, race white, gender male, 5'9", 185 pounds, blonde hair and blue eyes, did then and there commit the crime of first degree murder after deliberation as that crime is defined by CRS 18.31021A, respectively, and is further set forth in the complaint attached to and made part thereof. You are therefore commanded to arrest James Tolliver Craig and bring him before the nearest available district court without unnecessary delay to be dealt with according to the law. His next court appearance will be on Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. On March 15th at approximately 11.08 a.m., victim Angela Craig, date of birth 4-15-1979, presented herself to the university hospital because she had a severe headache and was experiencing dizziness. Angela was accompanied by her brother and later met by her husband, James Craig. At approximately 2 p.m., Angela experienced a seizure and began to rapidly decline medically. Eventually, she was placed on life support in the ICU. Hospital medical personnel could not find a known medical condition that would have caused Angela's rapid medical decline. Your affiant was told that James was a dentist who worked at the Summerbrook Dental Group. James had a business partner who was also a dentist and his wife are friends with James and Angela. On March 15, 2023, James communicated with via text message from his cell phone and informed that Angela had been admitted to University Hospital and her condition was grave. They both responded to University Hospital. At the hospital, they spoke with one of the attending nurses regarding his suspicion that Angela was the possible victim of poisoning. He explained to the nurse that James recently ordered potassium cyanide for their dental practice, adding that there was no medical reason or purpose to order potassium cyanide for a dental practice. As a mandatory reporter, the nurse called the police and an investigation ensued. The Major Crime Homicide Unit was contacted and took over the investigation. On March 16, 2023, in the early morning hours, your affiant spoke with at the Aurora Police Department headquarters, where they had volunteered to talk with your affiant. They began by saying that he and James have been business partners since August of 2022, when Ryan acquired James's dental practice, which had been struggling financially. They stated although he recently took over James's dental practice, they've known each other for over 20 years and went to dental school together. They described James as a risk taker and found out he had filed for bankruptcy in 2021 and was on the verge of bankruptcy again. They also stated that in January, James confided in him that he and Angela were having marital problems, otherwise known as his lying, cheating ass. On March 15, 2023, office manager contacted via phone as he was driving to the university hospital to be with James. They were also contacted by another office manager and said that on March the 6th, 2023, the day Angela first became sick and went to Parker Adventist, she was working late at the dental office and said James returned to the office after hours. 
She observed James at an exam room computer with the lights off doing something on the computer. This was odd because James had his own office with his own computer and personal laptop he regularly took to and from the office. They said approximately 30 minutes after James left the dental office, he texted telling her that he would be receiving a personal package and told her not to open it. She stated that a package arrived for James on Monday, March 13th, 2023. She found that the package box had been opened. She found out that another employee had opened the package. Forgetting that James was getting a package, she looked inside the package. Inside the package, she saw a biohazard sticker and what said potassium cyanide on a circular canister. She realized that was the package for James and sealed the package back up and gave it to James. She later said she googled what potassium cyanide was used for and saw that Angela had the same symptoms. She then called another employee when she heard that Angela was back in the hospital on March 15, 2023 and told her about the contents of the package. James and his business partner arrived at the university hospital in separate vehicles but entered the hospital together. Upon arriving, they spoke briefly to James, but he received a phone call from a doctor, so he stepped away. While James was on the phone, the nurse came out to speak with him. They stated while James was on the phone, he pulled the nurse away and told the nurse about his concerns that Angela may have been poisoned with potassium cyanide. While at the hospital, they observed James meeting with doctors about Angela's prognosis and observed James crying after the meeting. They then left the hospital and returned to their vehicle. While in the vehicle, they received a call from James's personal cell phone. The phone connected via the vehicle's Bluetooth so that they could hear the conversation. James told them that he had heard some disturbing information and then asked if he had said anything to the hospital staff. They admitted that he talked to the hospital staff about this incident and advised that he was aware of the package that James had ordered. James replied that the package was a ring for Angela and that he wanted to surprise her. Yeah, right. Like a ring is going to come in a canister in a box with a biohazard label on it. They countered by telling James he knew it was not a ring. James claimed the package was never opened, so he couldn't know what was in it. And then they advised the package was definitely opened and it did not contain a ring. They asked James why he would buy potassium cyanide. James eventually recanted and admitted the package contained potassium cyanide. And here we go with some victim blaming. But claimed that Angela asked him to order it. James claimed that Angela couldn't order the potassium cyanide because she didn't have the proper credentials. James told him that he ordered the potassium cyanide, but he didn't think that she, Angela, would actually take it. James described the situation as being similar to a game of chicken. At that point, this person told James to stop talking and get a lawyer. Your affiant and Detective Graw then interviewed this person who provided a similar account of events. This couple was then interviewed and they said that Angela had first become sick on March 6th, 2023. Angela went to Parker Adventist Hospital and was released the same day. Angela reported she was dizzy and weak. She stated Angela fell ill again and returned to Parker Adventist Hospital on March 9th, 2023. Angela was admitted on March 9th, 2023, and then released on March 14th, 2023. Medical personnel were unable to determine what was causing Angela to have her symptoms. And they stated that the next day on March 15th at approximately 11 a.m., Angela was brought to University Hospital by her brother. She added that she had exchanged texts with James since Angela was admitted to Parker Adventist on March 9th, 2023, trying to keep up to date with Angela's medical condition, and that she stated she was a professor and had a PhD in nursing, so she asked James to keep her updated on Angela's symptoms to potentially assist in diagnosing her. She provided your affiant screenshots of the text exchange between her and James beginning March 9th, 2023. Your affiant confirmed the contact Jim Craig in her cell phone was James's phone number. Your affiant reviewed the text messages. The blue boxes outlined their statements and the white boxes outlined James's responses in reference to Angela's medical conditions. So this lady says, which hospital is Angela at? Do you need anything? He says, Parker Adventist, thanks for offering. But for now, I think we've got more support than we can handle. I mean, who would really say that in the situation, right? Gotta love the church. See, the sarcasm's always there with him. Do they have a diagnosis yet? I'm so sorry we are praying. No diagnosis, thank you. Any news? Nothing yet. They just admitted her to the hospital for an overnight observation. Good, I'm praying. I mean, good, I'm glad she's being admitted. He says, lol, yeah, I figured that's what you meant. How did Ange do overnight? He talks about low blood pressure all night, vomiting in the morning, still trying to figure this out. She says, ugh, I'm so sorry. Tell her we love her and we are praying. He said, I sure will. Thank you. Just checking to see how Ange is doing and if they've made any headway today. 
How are you doing? Do you need anything? And he says, thanks. It's been pretty rough not having any answers. I get pretty nervous. I mean, why is he getting pretty nervous? I get pretty nervous. They did so many tests. They've done four or five different blood draws. The regular blood panels all come back okay. And she's negative for autoimmune disorders, negative for diabetes. Her A1C was 5.5. The main issue they seem to be concerned about right now is blood pressure. They, they dumped, dumped five L into her IV over 24 hours. And she looks super puffy and swollen. But her blood pressure is barely 100 over 60. Yesterday morning, she was 56 over 44. So although that's the main concern that doctors have, my main concern is just how she's feeling. Really pretty crappy. They are going to keep her one more night and hopefully she can come home tomorrow sometime. How did her kidneys handle that kind of fluid? I'm sure she's miserable. And this has had to be so frightening for everyone. He says her BUN urea nitrogen was 29 yesterday, but today it's back down in the normal range of 21. They think she was just dehydrated. Her kidneys seem to be doing well so far. They thought it might be adrenal insufficiency, but they tested for that too, and so far no answers. Low blood pressure would cause her to be lethargic and slow her speed. I'm glad she doesn't have those disease processes, but any answer would help ease anxiety and have a plan. Not knowing is more terrifying in my opinion. And then they just go on and on. So the point is, they're going on and on because they're discussing backwards and forwards, Angela's deteriorating health and symptoms. The point of showing you this is to show how invested he is in monitoring her every medical moment, every single thing, every way that she's deteriorating, he's monitoring because he's waiting for her to die. The police even highlighted the statement where he says, if it wasn't my wife, this would be kind of a fun puzzle to try to work out. She said truth and he said, I'm surprised they haven't yet. So he must have felt like a real smarty pants right there. This document is available publicly. If you just Google it, I'm sure you can find it. It's on many sources. So if you want to read through all of this, you can. I just want to move on because I want to show you the text between Angela and James. Let me show you one more before I move on. He said, she's not laughing at any of my jokes either. So you know it's really bad. Because remember, he's a funny, funny guy. She said, that's distressing because you are funny. Anyway, and then he shares a, a gif over there. James then texted two pictures and he literally stands in the background like a freaking creepy dude taking a picture of Angela who is dying from all the poison that he's put in her protein shakes with all the medical staff around her and sends that to the friend. They contacted your affiant on March 15, 2023 at approximately 9 a.m. and stated that James called. However, he did not answer. So this is now his business partner and friend that James has decided to guilt trip the crap out of. Are we ready to look at this before we dive into the text between James and Angela? So this is what James says to his friend that he's known for more than 20 years and business partner. Good morning. Thank you for taking my patient load today. I want to make an urgent plea to you. If we were ever friends, please do this favor for me. Please don't talk to anyone about what we talked about last night, including any law enforcement officers. You are under no obligation to answer their questions unless you are served a subpoena and you will do more damage than good to my family by continuing to insert yourself into this. Angela's gone and I'm devastated. There's nothing that can bring her back and I want desperately to tell you all of the details so that you can better understand what's going on behind the scenes with her. There is so, so much that you don't know that I wish you did. If you knew everything, this would make so much sense to you, but there's no use in telling you right now. You and I have a history of you and the other partners and Jackie all talking about me behind my back and deciding what you think is best. And then you're always the fall guy that has to pull the trigger or tell me what you've all decided about me. In fact, yesterday you didn't even come to me. I had to seek you out. I mean, the audacity, his friend didn't even come to him. He says, I had to seek you out. You have never given me the advantage of talking with me first. You just decide and then act and hope I'll pick up the pieces later. This is a pattern in our business dealings and now has become a factor in our personal dealings. Let me tell you, buddy, there's a pattern in everything you do. But he's pointing fingers every which way now, isn't he? Let me paint a picture for you of what this has done. And now we go with emotional blackmail and guilt tripping. Yesterday, I had to tell my kids that their mom was not going to wake up and they were to say their final goodbyes. This was at 6.45 p.m. 
The hospital said we could bring the kids up to say goodbye at that time. But because of the investigation that you opened by your incomplete information, the hospital made those poor, grieving, hysterical kids wait until after 10 o'clock to see their mom. After an hour or so of saying goodbye to her, we went home just before midnight only to have our house sealed against our entry by the police. Instead of getting to go home and find comfort, they were met with flashing lights and cold, unfeeling cops and the kids, scared and confused, had to go sleep at the home of a ward member. Family is starting to come into town today and I have to tell them that they can't come to my house and try to explain why. I have to hire a homicide attorney to make sure I don't end up being painted in the light that you know some hungry DA is anxious to paint me in because I am most likely going to be charged even though that is absolutely not what happened. Ryan, I understand why you did what you did. I do. I get it. But if you had come to me personally, man to man, instead of talking to everyone else about what you thought you knew, I might have let you in on some details that would have made you less likely to cause this horrible storm. Like, bro, I can't even. He's guilt tripping his friend now and blaming him for everything and trying to make him feel super guilty. But all of that, that whole storm, all the discomfort and scared feelings and everything experienced by his children. Yeah, he did it when he murdered his wife and their mother. Man, Ryan, if only you had put me higher on your list of priorities instead of putting everyone else's opinions and gossip ahead of me. For that, I am very, very mad at you. I have talked to you about this multiple times, but you don't seem to care. And now, what you thought was responsible has become reckless and so, so destructive. And so I'm asking, if there was ever any love in your heart for me, please don't make this any worse by talking to any officers or anyone else about this unless you are legally forced to. And whoever else is on the team you think is going to be questioned, I would ask that you privately ask them to honor this request too. And please do not respond to this text until I text you again. Okay, so feel really crappy, feel really guilty, look at what you've done. Also, just don't talk, talk to me, talk to the hand. You speak to me when spoken to, okay, friend? Aurora Police Department Major Crimes Homicide Detective Chamberlain responded to University Hospital on March 16th, 2023 at approximately 12.30 a.m. to speak with attending hospital staff. Detective Chamberlain learned that Angela arrived at the University Hospital at approximately 11 a.m. At approximately 2 p.m., Angela began suffering from a serious seizure and doctors struggled to intubate her. Angela suffered from a lack of oxygen, had no pupil reaction, and began to have increased cranial pressure which caused decreased perfusion pressure and was sent to the intensive care unit. Detective Chamberlain learned that Angela was still on life support and had no brain activity and her prognosis was poor, that she may not make it through the evening. Redacted was contacted and asked if she would respond to the Aurora Police Department to speak with detectives. In summary, she stated that she had been the office manager for the dentist's office for approximately six months and worked for James at Summerbrook Dental. Although they're also a dentist, he does not work at that dental clinic but is a partner in the business. They knew that on March 6, 2023, James and his wife Angela worked out in the morning. Before the workout, James made Angela a protein shake or pre-workout shake in which James gave her extra protein because she was feeling sluggish. After the workout, Angela became faint and dizzy and ultimately James took Angela to the hospital. They also started to notice odd or strange things around the office. On March 6th, towards the end of the day, she found James in the dentist's office in the back medical area, which she referred to as exam room number 9. She thought this was strange because James had his computer in his office and his wife had just been discharged from the hospital. They confirmed it was not common for James to use the computer in the exam room, specifically number nine, because he had his own computer in the office and a laptop that he took home with him. They left after a short time later and James remained in the office. Approximately 30 minutes later, James sent her a text message saying that he had a personal package coming to the office and to let her know when it came. During this time, Angela became ill and was taken to the hospital where she was constantly throwing up. It was unclear what her diagnosis was and James said Angela's blood pressure was low. On March 13th, 2023, they said that one of the office attendants opened a package that came into the office. The package was addressed directly to James. She knew this to be the personal package James had been asking about. This attendant had already opened the package. She took the package from the office attendant, which she intended to put in James's office. 
As she repackaged the box, she noticed a packing slip that read potassium cyanide. She described the package as a foil square with no other markings on it, and said the package had a biohazard or warning, but she couldn't remember what it was. She resealed the box and hand-delivered the package to James. She later saw James walking down the hall of the office with a cylindrically shaped canister wrapped in brown paper or a construction paper with a metal lid, but was unsure what the cylindrical canister was, but stated in the six months that she'd been at the dental office, she had not seen a similar canister. She had never seen potassium cyanide delivered to the office and was unsure what it was for, so she performed a Google search. In that search, she noted the side effects of ingesting potassium cyanide and matched the same symptoms Angela had been exhibiting over the last week, including nausea, vomiting, and low blood pressure. She said James told her when Angela was discharged on March 14, 2023, that she made accusations that James had poisoned her. Angela said something to James along the lines of, there are poisons they don't test for. She heard from James that Angela was sent home on oxygen and they didn't know what was wrong with her. On March 15, 2023, she learned that Angela was back in the hospital with the same symptoms. She said at one point she called her manager, who also thought that James might be responsible for Angela's sickness, and then shared the information she had about finding the potassium cyanide invoice. She stated she knew that James and Angela were having marital problems because James had recently mentioned he had told Angela that he wanted a divorce. She said that James had been distant from time to time at work and would leave sometimes at lunch because he and Angela were having fights. I think it's more like him and his mistress were having rollarounds. She said she had not seen the package since the day she gave to James and said the trash was collected by the trash company daily. On March 16, 2023, Detective Marino was contacted by Child Protective Services caseworker Sydney Ramiro, who met with the members of the Craig family, James Craig and his children, individually. In her conversation with James, she believed James made some concerning statements. Namely, James alleged that Angela was suicidal and had been for some time. James claimed that he, personally, has had to revive Angela on several occasions over the last few months. James said he asked Angela for a divorce in December of 2022, and since that time, Angela's depression and suicidal ideations have increased. James believed that Angela was intentionally overdosing on opioids and another unknown substance. James never reported any of these incidents, never sought medical attention for Angela during or after the alleged overdose attempts, and never sought professional counseling or therapy for Angela's depression and suicidal ideations. James told Sydney he was sure that Angela's toxicology would come back positive for substances, but said he didn't know what kind. Ah, oh, trying to cover his ass? Sydney felt compelled to report the following statements because none of Angela's children mentioned their mother's depression, nor did they mention any alleged previous suicide attempts. Sydney believed that it was improbable that this type of event, overdose, suicide attempt, could happen with no one inside the household except James being aware. Sydney provided her opinion that James was attempting to build a cover story for what really happened to Angela. On March 16, 2023, Detective Marino communicated with a friend of the Craig family and they informed Detective Marino that James was currently at her residence and intended to spend the night with his children while he was waiting for his two oldest children to come in from out of town. She stated that she resided at and that James would be there through the morning. On March 16, 2023, Detective Marino submitted three search warrant applications and affidavits to the 18th Judicial District Courts. One for James and Angela's home, one for the Summerbrook Dental Office, and one for the following address. Detective Marino was sworn in by Magistrate Rigid Farrow, who signed and issued all three search warrants. On March 16, 2023, at approximately 8.30 a.m., Aurora Police Department Detective Graw, annual affiant, responded to where we spoke to James. James stated he did not wish to speak to us about his wife's medical status. James was provided a copy of the signed search warrant requesting his cellular phone, Angela's cell phone too, and his wallet and his laptop. James handed your affiant Angela's cell phone and provided the passcode. James then handed your affiant his cell phone, a light blue iPhone 14, and provided the passcode. James said the laptop that he used regularly was at his dental office. James provided your affiant with a laptop's password. He said he did not carry a wallet but kept his credit cards and ID in his phone case. Your affiant took pictures of the cards and his Colorado driver's license and gave them back to James. On March 16, 2023, at approximately 8.45 a.m., your affiant, along with other major crimes homicide detectives, responded to 6795 South Roberts Dale Way and executed the search warrant. Upon clearing the residence to ensure that no one was inside, your affiant noted the house was affixed with both external and internal surveillance cameras. 
After the residence was cleared, Aurora Police Department Detective Marino completed an amended search warrant to include the seizure and search of the external and internal surveillance equipment and recorded surveillance footage. The search warrant was signed by the 18th Judicial District Magistrate Heidi Kutcher. During the search of the residence, multiple items believed to have information and or evidence related to this incident were located. The items collected from the resident were the following. Multiple types of powder proteins, multiple workout style shakers used to consume protein drinks or shakes, a computer tablet, two different plastic Ziploc style bags that both had white powdery substances in them, neither labeled what they are, a water bottle located on the exercise bike in the main bedroom area. While executing the search of the residence, we could not locate a hard drive or device that would obviously maintain data for a surveillance device. There was a security system affixed to the wall that could play the video exterior only, but it was not something that would be easily unplugged to seize. It is believed that the surveillance information would most likely be maintained on devices such as a phone, tablet or computer in a cloud-based system. On March 16, 2023, at approximately 11.45 a.m., your affiant and other major crimes homicide detectives executed the search warrant at Summerbrook Dental, 14991 East Hamden Avenue, Suite 370 in Aurora, Colorado. The dental office was closed for business. Upon entry to the business, multiple cameras affixed to the office walls were observed. The offices were clean and orderly. The information previously provided was that James had been in dental room number 9, where he was on the computer there in the dark. Your affiant viewed the dental room and found it to be an open style dental room, allowing someone to see if a person were at the computer. Each room had individual lights, but when not illuminated with overhead lights, the rooms were dark. Each exam room was identified by a silver metal style number on the hallway walls next to the entrance of the room. Exam room number nine was found to be at the far end of the clinic's dead end hallway. Your affiant collected the hard drive that was hooked up and connected to the monitor in exam room number nine. The hard drive was a Dell Optiplex 3070. The drive had a Logitech USB plugged into the back. The hard drive was seized. Your affiant located an office in the clinic's southeast corner containing two office desks. On the far desk south, a laptop was observed. When the laptop's screen was woken, it showed the last logged in person was James. The password James provided for the laptop was entered to make sure that the laptop was his. The password activated the laptop and opened it. No further investigation into the laptop's contents was conducted. The laptop was collected and determined to be a Dell Precision 7750, gray or silver in color. The series was and James's laptop was seized. Aurora Police Department Detective Harris located a small hand vacuum in the office with three additional desks with computers. The vacuum had a white powdery substance inside of it. A portion of the substance was collected and seized, and we can only imagine what that was. Detective Harris located James's DEA number, United States Drug Enforcement Registration number. Your affian knows a DEA number is assigned to healthcare providers, allowing them to write prescriptions. Your affian accessed Angela's cell phone text messages and found several between her and James about their day, the children's day, and their activities. Your affian found Angela had James in her phone as the boy. Which actually makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? With the picture of the two of them and confirmed the phone number had matched that of the phone number that the two friends had said was his. While reading through the text messages on March the 1st, 2023, your affiant found Angela and James were discussing their relationship, mainly about James's healing and counseling, and your affiant noted the following text exchange. Angela's text messages are in blue and James's is in white. So, Angela says... Have to do everything alone. Your healing and happiness, this marriage, is more important than my day. You are more important than my day. I'm going to interject for a second there and say no. If you believe that, you guys, just know that you are the number one priority in your own life. Okay, make sure you put yourself first. Thank you. I know you are getting ready to go out and spend some time with Tony. I would like to ask that you keep last night's conversation details just between you and I. I trust Tony, but it was hard for me to even tell you that stuff. I'm definitely not ready for anybody else to hear it. I don't know if that's about the failing business, the porn addiction, the gambling, or probably he probably didn't tell her about the mistress, but who knows what lie he concocted there. She says, of course, I wasn't planning to talk about any of it. I haven't actually talked to Tony about any of the last few months since that initial conversation. Then he says, I'm sorry, I know she is kind of your outlet and your strength and support and somebody who you could always go to to vent. 
I hate taking away even a part of that since I know this is really, really hard for you. Your affiant noted that James and Angela's text messages beginning on the morning of March the 6th, 2023, the first day that she began experiencing unexplained illness symptoms. Okay, so his messages, as they say, are in white and hers are in blue. So he says, thank you so much for making my drink this morning. I just love you. I hope you have a great day and I'm glad you're back in town. Because, you know, she was visiting her sister. Then she says, you're welcome, baby. I love you too. I think my body's not letting the caffeine this morning either. My stomach feels fine, but my head feels funny and dizzy. Very strange. And then he says, it's been a week since caffeine for you. Maybe your body's saying no, thank you. I did a full scoop of caffeine and a full big scoop of the B vitamins. Is that how much you normally take? I'm super shaky. She said, oh, no, I do a small scoop of the B vitamin mix. It feels really weird. He said, oops, sorry, baby. And then she says, that's okay. It'll wear off. I'm dizzy and my eyes don't want to focus, but I can get the stuff done that I need to this morning. And he says, maybe you should lie down. So she says, I'm laying on my face on the mat in my room. And then he says, you have a bed, you know, because remember, he's a funny guy. She said, I'm stinky. Just seems excessive for a little extra supplement. He said, Pearl, now he changes the topic. Pearl is flying in this morning to see me. I totally forgot. I think she's flying out today too, though. And then Angela continues, I don't feel right in my head. He said, do I need to come home? She said, no, this is just weird. I'm dizzy in my head and my eyes are working slowly and my body is responding slowly. And he says, that sounds really wrong. I'm going to come home. I don't like this. She replies, you can't. You need to work. I'll throw on some clothes and sit with the girls and see if it goes away. He then says, okay, I'm probably, I think he meant to write overacting. Okay, but I don't like that. I can cancel patients for the morning or move some to Dr. P if needed. So you can change your mind. Let me know. Do we have a blood pressure cuff? You should try that and see if your blood pressure is low or something. Did you get lightheaded when you stand up? She said, it feels more like I feel... When I take heavy meds and everything adjusts and moves slowly, like I'm moving in thick gel, my eyes are struggling to stay focused. And then he's like, did you take your blood pressure? To me, it sounds like he's just excited to be like, ooh, are the symptoms kicking in? Which is sickening. She said, I don't know where one is. And he said, okay, if you do end up wanting me to come home, I'll bring one. I have a bottle of magnesium in my second drawer down on the left side of my sink. Take one of those. Have you eaten anything? She said, I had my protein shake and magnesium makes me weird. This is not hungry. He says, are you nauseous? No, I feel drugged. Given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just for the record, I didn't drug you. He might as well have written this time, except this time he did. Although he actually poisoned her. He's actually telling a little bit of a half truth here because he didn't drug her. He poisoned her. I'm super worried though. You really look pale before I left, like in your lips even. Then... Mr. Doctor, the dentist, okay, says, I was plugging your symptoms into Google and stroke matches some of what you're describing. Do you have weakness in your whole body or just one side? And is it both your eyes or just one that feels blurry? She says, it feels like my whole body and it's tingly and my eyes are struggling to focus. He's like, are you still laying down? She says, I got in my bed. He says, okay, good. My whole body feels so heavy. Something's really wrong. I'm coming home with a blood pressure cuff. If nothing else, I can at least help the girls stay on track while you rest. She said, please come get the dogs. Sorry. Also, I want to shower, but I'm worried. He said, okay, I'll come help. I'm all done and headed home. How are you feeling? She said, same. Belle's making grilled cheese. Thanks, Belle. I'm all done here and headed back home now. And then she said, I would like another blessing tonight if there's someone who could help. Okay, I'm sure we can find someone. And she said, you don't have to miss work today. We don't have any way to go today and the girls and I will be fine. I'm starting to think I'm just sick and this is part of it. I'm going to try my popcorn and Dr. Walker this morning and we'll see what we can do. He said, I'm not sure your popcorn will do much, but you're welcome to try it because he knows he's poisoned her with arsenic and cyanide. Okay. Then she said, PCP, I may just have Belle take me to urgent care this morning. I should have had you do that yesterday. The ER is useless. Sorry. He said, no, you're fine. It did help us rule out a lot of other scarier things. So I'm glad we did it. And she says, I'm kind of wondering if maybe I had a sinus infection and I didn't really even notice because I get so used to them and it turned into an inner ear infection. And that's why it felt like it came on all of a sudden. He said, let's hope. I mean, that's not a normal response either. Let's hope. So how are you feeling compared to yesterday now that you're up and moving around? And she said, same. He says, geez. I'm not sure what you were expecting. I don't think this is a sleep thing. 
And then he says, I don't know either. I was hoping that maybe the worst is behind us and you were going to start feeling better over time, I guess. Then she says, did the ER give you any paperwork yesterday? Okay. Only the discharge paperwork on the island. It didn't have any of the blood work results or your MRI interpretation or the CT interpretations or even the glucose numbers. Since you're out and about, I really think you should go over there and see if you can get a copy of it. Then she says, they were supposed to give us info on the patient portal so we could access it ourselves. And he says, I didn't get any of that. Sorry, the patient portal discussion must have been something that happened before I got back, kind of like between your MRI and being discharged. She said, that's okay, I'll take care of it. I don't want to tell you, but I feel like you would be upset if I don't. But I may have passed out a little this morning while standing in the kitchen. I just remember holding on to the island because I was dizzy and then Violet in my face saying, Mommy. Like shame, she fainted in the kitchen in front of one of her daughters. He said, um, thank you for telling me, but that would have been a good moment to call 911. She then says, I woke up with a headache and spots in my eyes. Spots went away, headache still there. He said, sorry, baby, that sounds awful. Your family's out of control, but hilarious. Then she said, I'm aware of both those things. BS, so blood sugar only, 97 today. Wow, that's weird. A1C. And then they do a deep dive on this A1C and it's sounding like diabetes and all of that. So I'm just going to move on a little bit. If you want to pause to read, you can. Now, if we look at the third screenshot from the left, he says, I love you. It was so nice hanging out with you and just watching a show and snuggling. I'm sorry that you still aren't feeling well and that you feel like I am disappointed about that. I'm not disappointed at all. Just feeling empathy for how hard it must be for you. Hopefully things can improve and get better. I'm also grateful that the last couple of days have allowed me to have more flexibility in my schedule. God really does know what he's doing. Are you feeling anything in particular for dinner tonight or this week? She said, I'm having a hard time feeling okay being sick and even a harder time knowing whether that's me or you. I could tell you were worried yesterday, but I guess I just think they sent us home and said nothing was wrong. And you think I should be fine. I realize I could be reliving the past. It's just hard. And frankly, all of this is really scary and I don't feel like we've addressed that at all. But I don't even remember most of yesterday, so maybe we did address it. I'm a crazy person. I'm not feeling anything particular about food right now. Tony's sending dinner tonight. He said, oh good, what's she sending and when will it arrive? Notice how he doesn't address her fears at all. She's feeling really scared at the moment here where she types this to him. She's saying, we're not even addressing at all. You don't really seem concerned. And you think I'm just going to get checked out of hospital and be okay? And when she says, I think I'm maybe, maybe I'm reliving the past. She means it feels like the time when he drugged her in the past. So she doesn't quite trust him. She doesn't know why she's feeling this way. And she's scared. Now, again, if we look at the third screenshot from the left, he says there, so, so busy. I'm planning to come home and eat lunch with you though. And she says, am I eating lunch? I'll need to gear up for that. I'm glad I get to see you. And he said, I'm glad too. I'll need to ask you what you're hungry for and bring it to you. I'm kind of feeling just a smoothie or something. Can you believe this guy? He's kind of feeling just a smoothie or something. Like, can I bring you a smoothie? How about that? And then he says, how's your headache? She said, better, but it still hurts. I probably just need a shower and some sleep and some food. I hate your bird today. She won't be quiet. He has an African gray parrot, by the way. He said, shower and sleep and food sounds great. She said, I'm sorry about my family. He then says, again, deflecting, saying, I just wish I could get my watch to stop sending me notifications every time they text. It's so annoying that I can turn off the notifications for the chat in my phone, but my watch doesn't listen. It's tapping me and tapping me and tapping me all day as long as I'm trying to work with patients. Poor Angela even offers him some technical advice here. Maybe try this. I know it doesn't solve the problem, but it will shut it off for now. He says, thanks, I'll try that. She said, hi, baby, I love your face. He said, how you doing? Good, just waiting for Julia. I'm trying to share my vital stats with you so you can see something even if I'm asleep, but my head hurts and the BP one is making it worse. He says, the BP one? I would need a separate blood pressure app, I think. I'm not really sure. He then says, is Belle home yet? Just got here. You okay? He said, just checking in on you, checking in again, how are you doing? You're scary. He literally types to her, you're scary. Even though he's the one who's poisoned her and he's literally waiting for her to die. 
She said, sorry, baby, I fell asleep on the couch. Then I woke up. Now I'm hungry. And he says, I waited an entire minute, Ange. Thank you for checking on me. I love you. He says, I love you too. I like checking on you. Now, if we go to the last screenshot, right hand side of the screen, he writes the following. And it's not the only time he writes stuff like this. He says, I'm going to trust that you are just sleeping and not dead somewhere. I mean, not dead somewhere. She's in the hospital. I just finished up with what I needed to do at work. I just left the office. I'm going to stop at King Supers on my way home and grab a couple of ingredients to make dinner tonight. Love you. Okay, all done with groceries. I'm headed home to make you some dinner. How are you doing? She said, I feel super tired, but I left my phone on my lap, so I hope I feel it if you text. He said, okay, thank you. I mean, throughout all of this, as Angela's health is deteriorating, he makes jokes by saying, I've decided that me owning a water bottle just means that I get to come in every morning and look at it on my desk. She says, that is not the purpose of a water bottle. He's like, are you nauseous? I'm reading up on low blood pressure. She said, not today. I'm cold, super tired, weak, shaky and dizzy. He's like, super thirsty? I've been drinking stuff all morning, so who knows? Blurred vision? No. I'm having a hard time concentrating this morning, is what he replies. He said that he's having a hard time concentrating this morning. She said, I'm sorry, I'm just sleepy. And then he says, that's okay, you don't have to say sorry. How are you doing now? And then they go on about her stats and if she ate anything and that she's just really tired um, and just trying to get some sleep. He said at the bottom of the third screenshot there, I'm sorry you're feeling so crappy. I hope they figure this out. And on the fourth screenshot on the right, he says, man, baby, you've got to stop scaring me like this. I love you so much and I'm not used to all of this excitement. Can you believe he described that as all of this excitement? I mean, he was excited. The symptoms were starting to show. His mistress was in town. He's having the time of his freaking life. On the second screenshot here, she said, my head hurts so bad. He said, I'm sorry, have they given you anything for it? I'm going to lay down for about an hour in case you're trying to reach me. So when she says, my head hurts so bad, his response is, oh, I'm sorry about that. Did they give you anything? Also, it's nap time for me. Now notice on the third and fourth screenshot that you see right now, how long that message gets. And my gut instinct is that he thought she was about to pass away. So he's saying a whole lot here. This was on March the 10th. Angela died on March 18th. So he said, just tried to reach you, but went to voicemail. I hope that means you're getting some rest finally. I plan to bring the girls up a little bit after five o'clock. We probably won't stay super long with everybody there because Cleo has a hangout with a couple of her friends. At our house tonight at six plus, it gets to be a little wild and crazy with everybody in there at the same time. And I know that your headache probably doesn't appreciate that that your headache doesn't appreciate that. By the way, if you have any insight for me on what you would prefer in terms of visitation, let me know. It's really hard to read you and I don't know if you like having us come up and visit or if, you, if it just makes it hard because you have to talk and think and we are noisy. I also don't really know if you like when I come up or what you would prefer. I want to do what you want, which is, in my opinion, his way of manipulating her to be like, we're bothering you, right? Like if you could just get a tiny little bit of consent to just now stay out of the way while he thinks that she's dying, he'd rather do that. And she says, I'm working on stretching right now in the hopes that my head will feel better. They just gave me a bunch of meds for my headache and my heartburn. I do like seeing you guys, but you're right. When my head hurts, it's hard to have a lot of people here making a lot of noise. I love having you here. I just don't want to wear you out trying to take care of everything at home and be here with me. He then says, I'm fine. It's really busy and crazy, but that's always the case when you're not around. I want to be up there with you 24 seven. I love and miss you and I'm so worried. I wish you were healthy enough to come home tonight and snuggle me. Again, we've seen this in true crime cases before where instead of saying, I wish you could come home tonight and I could just take care of you and snuggle you. He says, I wish you could come home tonight and snuggle me. But thank you for saying so that I can feel like you're being cared for by professionals. She says, please bring deodorant, which he just thumbs up. Then he said, I love you. I'm excited to have you home again. I'm kind of feeling a little bit like I'm drowning, but I'm doing my best. And she said, I'm sure you're doing great. So my blood pressure was just 145 over 73. I can't win. He says, oh my gosh, I'm going to head over and hang out with you for about an hour or so, if you're okay with that. Or should I say, I'm going to hang out with you until I feel like I'm falling asleep. And then we'll come back home and do exactly that. But I want to see you again today. She says, I love that idea. He says, how are you feeling? Meh, the nausea is back, but my head 
doesn't hurt as much. We will take what we can get, right? She said, if you haven't left yet, please don't forget to bring me a t-shirt. These long sleeves are making my vitals a little rough. He says, I've already left, but I also remember the t-shirt. Because, you know, he's a knight in shining armor. She said, thank you for coming back. I miss you so much and it's so nice to have some time. I love you. He said, you're welcome. I wish I could have stayed longer. I love you and I'm so glad you seem to be doing better. I hope you're able to at least get some water or crystal light down. I just woke up dreaming about making love to you. I love you and I want you. Good morning. How are you feeling? She said, bring a couple of pears just in case, please. So <laughs> she ignored that. Good for her. Then he said, okay, I forgot to ask, how's your blood pressure been? Please let me know when the doctor comes. And then she says, she's coming in now. If we look at the screenshot on the left, he says, it just occurred to me that I have not brought you any flowers while you're in the hospital. I'm so sorry. I don't know how that skipped my notice. I think it's because I keep expecting them to let you go at any moment. If I had known you were going to be here this long, I probably would have done a better job with that. She said, it's okay. I don't need flowers. Clean underwear, blue and gray pajama pants, pink shaver, pink or teal t-shirt, Pilates socks, plastic bag for dirty clothes. Then he says, were you wanting me to go home and gather these things and bring them right back? Or is it okay to bring them the next time I come down? Like, could you just delay your discomfort? Can I just like come through now and then another time I'll bring all the stuff? She said, I like them as soon as possible. I'm feeling kind of gross. So he says, okay, I'll drop the kids off at home and grab that stuff and bring it right back. Where would I find the blue and gray pajama pants and the pink or teal t-shirt? And Angela says, the girl's know what I mean in case you don't. Pajama pants on the shelf in my closet, t-shirts hanging up. My duffel should be in there too. Also travel size soap. He says noted. Then she says blood pressure 114 over 81. I have a low grade fever. And he says man your blood pressure is all over the board. 145 over 45 followed by 114 over 81. Somebody needs to tell your brain to get it together. And then she says I've been saying that forever. And then she says, my pulse OX doesn't want to work. He said, maybe you don't have any pulse. She says, maybe I'm a vampire. They keep taking all of my blood. Okay, I'm trying a sandwich. Wish me luck. He says, coming up. Me, that is. Hopefully not the sandwich. She said, thank you, baby. On the third screenshot from the left, she said, cardiologist thinks I'm a puzzle. He says, I'm shocked. And then she says, literally said exactly what Dr. Pham said. Well, you're a puzzle. He said, I know. So what's next? He said, he's going to check on me tomorrow, but also said Dr. King is supposed to come by. Now I'm hungry. And he says, besides being hungry, how are you feeling? Tired? Like I want a real shower? Will they let you have one? It's hard with the IV. I ordered orange sherbet. He says, bragger. And she says, I would like to go home. I'm sure. Are they saying another night? They're not saying anything. I haven't seen my doctor. Are you still super sleepy? And of course she is. Now, we, if we look at the third screenshot again from the left, she said to him, thank you for spending as much time here as you do. It hasn't been fun and I want to go home, but it really hasn't been that bad either. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. When you get home, can you please put the crock pot out and the crock pot liners for Barb to pick up tomorrow? She wants to make you guys taco soup, but wanted to do it in our crock pot. So we didn't have to try to, re to return it to her. He said, absolutely, I'm on it. And then she said, also, there's a funny spot in the doorbell cam. You might want to wipe that off. And he said, oh, okay, I'm on that too. Maybe the funny spot is me. Do I look funny in it? I can't wait to see you at home in my bed tomorrow. She says, hopefully I'll be other places in the house too. He said, no way, dude. She said, I've had enough bed rest. So he says, time for bed exercise. And then she says, how about let's make sure I don't feel like committing first. He says, committing. She says, ha, vomiting. He said, okay, commit to not vomiting. And she says, I'll work on it. And then he says, I fell asleep. Good night, baby. I love you. Next morning, what are your O2 sets? Not on oxygen. And what's your heart rate today? So she's like 96, 110. Jeez, this morning's nuts. How's yours? Any news yet? Lots of people coming in and out. When the nurse comes in next, I'll ask about the doctor and discharge. Okay, great. Were you able to hold down your breakfast? And she said, I've been trying to sleep. I haven't had breakfast. Makes sense. Keep sleeping. You need it. She said, I drank a protein drink. He says, good. I'm headed over to visit you now. Do you want me to bring you some Chick-fil-A? No, my stomach's still a little. Meh. I'll order a sandwich. He then says to her, 
That drink you gave me tastes weird. She said, good to know, I won't drink one. And then he says it wasn't bad necessarily, it just had kind of a faint, subtle, chalky aftertaste. And then she says, yuck. So that's a bit odd that he's saying, hmm, interesting, that drink you gave me, yeah, that tastes funny. Never mind the cyanide shakes that he was giving her. She said on the screenshot on the right hand side, the fourth one, thank you for taking care of me. He said, of course, don't forget you still have caffeinated crystal light if you want it. Or if you want some fresh with ice, I can make some and bring it to you too. She said, no, this is good. I have a sandwich coming, so that'll be perfect. My mouth tastes like medicine. She then says the doctor's going to sign her out and maybe he can come around at three to pick her up. And then he says, I should be able to do it if it's around three or later. She says, it's okay if you can't. There are plenty of people who can come get me. I just like you best. And he says, thanks. I like you too. And now we get to all the Google search history. So let's have a look at that. On March 17th, 2023, due to the forensic detective being off work, an initial history search of the devices, you remember the ones they seized, was conducted. Your affiant and Detective Harris plugged the hard drive into a TV to look at the history of dental room number nine. Now here you can see the fake email address he made, germanwaffles at gmail.com. Detective Harris opened the Google Chrome page and saw the above depiction. Just below the X area of the web page that you would click to exit the page was a J. When the J was selected, it provided me a possible additional email account of James. The known email on his phone was dinosaurjim at me.com. The new email was germanwaffles at gmail.com. Detective Harris then clicked on the three small dots to the right of the J and clicked on the history. The history of the email account began on February 27, 2023. This appeared to indicate that the email address was created on that date. Beginning on February 27, 2023, we observed that the user had conducted searches related to poison. Those searches included how many grams of pure arsenic will kill a human and is arsenic detectable in autopsy? The first screenshot on February 27th provided the following history. There it says your Amazon order, and you guys, that Amazon order was for arsenic, yes, from Amazon. James had searched chemical suppliers in Aurora, Colorado, and also had made a purchase via Amazon. We clicked on the Amazon order and found the following. So you can see there he spent about $18 in total on March the 4th, 2023. Delivered March the 4th, 2023. Package was left inside the resident's mailbox. Arsenic, metal, 99.9999%. Crystalline, metalloid, 10 grams for element collection. The Amazon order number in the mail number was then clicked on and the Amazon account pulled up an order. The item was ordered on February 27, 2023 and delivered to 6795 South Robertsdale Way in Aurora, Colorado, James's address, and left in the mailbox on March the 4th, 2023. The item ordered was arsenic metal, 99.9% .9 crystalline metalloid 10 grams for element collection. It cost $13. In the description of the item that James purchased, the information stated that arsenic is often believed to be used for murder, as it has been in many crime novels. The second portion of the informative description stated that the real danger is in swallowing it, which could very well prove fatal. The next screenshot showed the following history from 3.32 p.m. to 3.35 p.m., which you can see the Amazon order checkout. The next screenshot shows the search history from 3.28 p.m. to 3.32 p.m., which is how to purchase arsenic metal and his Amazon searches. The next screenshot shows the search history from 3.32 p.m. to 3.28 p.m. Where to purchase pure arsenic, Denver, Colorado. How to purchase arsenic. Is arsenic poisonous? Arsenic disulfide? And all of that, as you can see. James searched arsenic on the Alpha Chemistry website that provided many variations of arsenic. The next screenshot from 3.20 to 3.22 p.m. provided the following. How many grams of pure arsenic will kill a human is what he said. When that link is clicked, there's information of what could be an exposure or lethal dose, which you guys can see right there. Exposure, the lethal dose of arsenic in humans is 2 to 20 milligrams per kilogram or 140 to 1400 milligrams for an average size adult. The next screenshot from 315 to 320 provided the following. The bottom of the screenshot shows a search of is arsenic 
detectable in the autopsy from the Carlson company. When the website is checked for the Carlson company, the following can be found. So you can see it there. Is arsenic detected in autopsy, the Carlson company? And when you look up the company that he was looking up here, they're showing screenshots of it. It says, is it detectable in the autopsy? And then they explain everything that you need to know. The next screenshot from 3.11 to 3.16 provided the following. Top 5 undetectable poisons that show no signs of foul play. How to make poison. How to make poison. Oleander. How to make poison. The top 10 deadliest plants. They can kill you. Poison recipes. Oh yes. The search history provided YouTube searches for top 5 undetectable poisons that show no signs of foul play. How to make poison and the top 10 deadliest plants. They can kill you. The top five undetectable poisons showing no signs of foul play is a video by It's All Viral above. The video provides the top five undetectable poisons and how they affect certain people. The following information is a synopsis of what was provided. Polonium, an ex-Russian spy killed by this in a teacup. The item is said to be so dangerous that one gram could kill 1.5 million people in a few months. Mercury, and then cyanide, found in countless items in the home and other locations. 1.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight is a fatal dose for humans. Botulinum toxin, if not treated immediately, leads to paralysis. If not treated right away, can lead to death. And then arsenic, virtually undetectable besides the Marsh test used in murder and mystery. And so you know what this guy did? He's like, ah, yes, then arsenic is for me. The following screenshot from 3.02 p.m. to 3.12 p.m. provided the following. You can see again how to make poison, how to make poison from oleander, which is a plant. And nine horrible poisons, the deadliest toxins on earth and all that kind of stuff. The screenshot from 239 to 302 provides the following. And they say in this portion, there's information regarding oleandrin and how to make poison from oleander. The screenshot from 2.09 p.m. to 2.39 p.m. James had searched via Google by oleander and through Nerdfighteria Wiki, six deadly undetectable poisons and how you detect them. When you click on the by oleander, you get a Google search for the plant. The Nerdfighteria Wiki described multiple poisons in the text as well as had a video of the perfect poison. The site provides the following information. Within the text of the information is provided about arsenic or cyanide. The article is somewhat lengthy, but has information on some of the symptoms of cyanide. The symptoms are weakness, nausea, difficulty breathing, seizures, or cardiac arrest. The video explained that cyanide is very hard to detect and that it's often too late by the time the doctors can diagnose what happened. This concluded the search history on this date and anything related to poisons. So he was satisfied with his search. When we clicked on the Amazon order, we could view the emails from jimandwaffles at gmail.com account. Once we took a closer look at this account, we found additional purchases of poison. The account's first contacts were on February 27th, 2023, and it appeared the account had just been created. The account had the following contacts. Now that I'm not going to zoom in on because the mistress's name is also literally there. The emails ended on March 16th, 2023 and started on February 27th, 2023. The emails also have a J in the top right portion. And when clicked, it shows that it belongs to Jim Craig. The emails had multiple orders within the contents as well as communications with a mistress. Within the contents of the emails, there's an order on March 9th, 2023 from Midland Scientific. The item purchased was a Sigma 207-810-25G. After the item was purchased, Midland Scientific employee Cassie Rodriguez contacted James about some follow-up needs for the product. In researching what that product was, we discovered it is the technical term for potassium cyanide. The following email strand between James and employee Cassie Rodriguez took place. So basically, Cassie was asking, well, we're going to need some clarification of why you want this product. The initial response from the company stated they, they need a usage statement. Cassie informed James that they did not have the item in stock, but that they could ship the item overnight. The web order copy was provided and showed that it would be shipped to James's office. The order states, hopefully this is in stock and I can pick it up tomorrow, March 9th. It appeared that based on the order, James needed this product right away. The email then provided a PDF from the company of the restricted item usage statement form. The form provided the details that needed to be filled out by James for his purchase of the specific product of Sigma. 
James responded by stating he was a surgeon performing a cranial facial reconstruction. James said he's using this chemical to check and see if it will help with the layering of alternate metals. He stated that if successful, this will be published as a paper in the National Institutes of Health. He stated his license number is CO9285 and his professional email is drcraig at summerbrookdental.com. The email he's communicating on to buy the poisons and with is so with the mistress is jim and waffles at gmail.com at no time is james using his professional email to your affiant's knowledge to make these purchases after alleging that they are for work cassie responded stating the delivery was expected for tomorrow and the email is on march the 9th james tells cassie that she's been helpful and then she tells him that there's a preferred form for the product Cassie responded and stated that because James was a new user, that the system would take longer to process the order. James responded that he figured it out, referencing the form, and sent it from the hospital. He sent the following response. So this is his reasoning for wanting it as he described before. And he's filled it all in and signed with his authorized signature. Oh yes, he wants that cyanide. The response is the restricted usage form and he stated it would be used for electroplating over medical prosthesis. He signed the form and dated it March the 9th, 2023. James then responded to Cassie's message about the delivery delay and stated it was inconvenient. He stated he will shuffle some things around and then get the delivery on Friday, March 10th, which is when his business practice was usually closed. On March 10th, 2023, James contacted Cassie to ask if she had the shipment information. Cassie then sent a response from the supplier that the shipment is expected for Saturday, March 11, 2023. James asked again about the tracking information. James again contacted Cassie on March 11, 2023 and stated it was 7.30 p.m. He waited all day for the shipment at his office. James's office is only open Monday through Thursday. James still had the shipment sent to his office on a day off. He had communicated with Caitlin that he had a personal package coming to the office and not to open it. It was believed that this package was the personal package. Cassie then responded on March 13, 2023. She provided a FedEx tracking number of and Caitlin had told your affiant that the potassium cyanide had been shipped on March 13, 2023 to the office via FedEx. The conversations concluded with Cassie telling James he was welcome. Your affiant looked up the Sigma product on Midland Scientific's website and found the following. So this is now the product, the Sigma with the whole number thing is 25 grams potassium cyanide. Caitlin stated that she'd seen a container with a label of potassium cyanide on it. James told her not to open the box, but she had gotten to it first and the box was opened with the potassium cyanide inside. James had alleged to her via email that this was for work, but told his employees it was a personal purchase. Yoafian checked FedEx for the tracking number associated and found the following. On Monday, there is the order. It's coming from Milwaukee, Wisconsin and going to Denver, Colorado. The item stated it was delivered on March 13, 2023, which was consistent with what Caitlin had provided detectives. There was another purchase made by James on March the 6th to Adu Q Bioscience. The purchase was for three oleandrin 1 milligram items for $330. The invoice date was March 10th, 2023. On the form, the usage stated the following. Products are for research use only, not for human use. We do not sell to patients. See below. So what they've highlighted there is that the products are for research only. We do not sell to patients. James never received this item because MCHU investigator Josephek was able to contact FedEx and inform them of the situation. FedEx stated the interdiction team would stop the delivery of the package and hold it for investigator Josephek to recover. The other emails were with the mistress. The emails were intimate in nature and contained sexually explicit conversations. There were also travel plans within those emails to the mistress. The first travel dates were March 8th to 10th, 2023, which showed that she was traveling from Austin, Texas to Denver, Colorado. Angela was in the hospital during March 9 to 14, 2023. The email account appeared to have been created on February 27, 2023, along with the searches, plans to poison someone and convene with his mistress. It appeared that James had her visit him while his wife was in the hospital sick. The second flight itinerary was for March 16th to 20th, 2023. This flight was purchased on March the 4th, 2023, which was the same date that the arsenic was delivered to James's house. 
Follow-up email from the mistress on March 16, 2023, suggested that James had told her something had happened to Angela. She sent James an email explaining how sorry she was for him and that she wished she was helping him, not pulling him away. She said that she knew it had to be so hard what he was going through and that she wanted to be there for him, but did not want to mix in with his family and friends and pretend to be only a friend when there was something more. On March 17, 2023, your affian spoke with Angela's redacted and stated that she and Angela spoke almost daily. Angela visited her, so this is her sister. Angela visited her in Utah from March 1st through March 5th, 2023. While in Utah, Angela was neither sick nor complained of not feeling well. She stated Angela and James's marriage had always been tumultuous. James had multiple affairs with several women, told Angela he'd been addicted to porn since he was a teenager and drugged Angela approximately five to six years ago. Angela told her that James drugged her, an unknown drug, because he planned to go into the bathroom and give himself a lethal injection of something to end his life. James told Angela he drugged her so she wouldn't find him nor be able to save him, which would give the lethal drugs time to kill him. Your affiant believed this is what James referred to in the text message exchange outlined in red earlier in this affidavit. Given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just for the record, I didn't drug you. Angela told her sister several times over the past 16 years that she was going to leave James, but said that James always convinced her to stay. Angela told her that James had run the dental office into the ground and that their finances were dire. Angela complained to her that James recently traveled to Las Vegas, where she said he gambled away over $2,000. When James updated her on Angela's status, James said he would not allow hospital staff to conduct an autopsy. She played with James, asking him to do an autopsy in case it was genetic so they could prevent one of their children from getting sick. James said he felt if they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her when she was alive, he wouldn't let them poke her more when she was dead. On March 18th, 2023, your affiant advised Angela was pronounced brain dead at 4.29 p.m. by University Hospital physician Natalie Held. Colorado CRS 12-24140 determination of death states that an individual is dead if a. The individual has sustained irreversible cessation of circulatory and respiratory functions or b. The individual has sustained irreversible cessation of all functions of the entire brain including the brain stem. Through the CDC, your affiant learned that ingesting arsenic typically causes severe gastrointestinal signs and symptoms such as vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea. The signs and symptoms might lead rapidly to dehydration and shock. Different clinical manifestations might follow, including dysrhythmias, prolonged QT T-wave changes, altered mental status, and multi-system organ failure that ultimately could result in death. Through the CDC, your affiant learned that ingesting cyanide typically causes chest pain, confusion, dizziness, eye pain, eye tearing, excitement, difficulty breathing, headache, nausea, rapid or slow heart rate, rapid or slow breathing, restlessness, shortness of breath, vomiting, weakness, or wheezing. In addition, more serious symptoms include high or low blood pressure, loss of consciousness, lung injury, seizures, coma, and death. Angela told James that she was having the following symptoms beginning on March 6, 2023 through March 15, 2023. Dizziness, her head felt funny, her eyes did not want to focus and felt heavy and slow, she felt drugged, her whole body was feeling tingly, extreme headache, eye discharge, altered mental state, high and low blood pressure, weak, shaky, tired, nausea and vomiting. Your affiant documented the litany of tests completed by two separate emergency department doctors through her text messages to James and James's messages to a friend. None provided a medical reason for his symptoms. However, Reading the CDC symptoms of the poisons, your affiant knows they are consistent with the symptoms Angela was experiencing and that ultimately killed her. Can you imagine how terrible this must be for all six children to realize that not only is their mom gone, but also that their dad poisoned their mom and also that he's now been charged with first degree murder. So now they have no parents. They are between the age of 8 and 20. Some of them had already moved out of the house and were out of town. I'm not too sure exactly where they are now. I've been trying to dig that for that information, but I really hope that they are safe and that they are okay. Sending condolences to Angela's family and friends. And I'll be keeping an eye on what's happening with his case. He is apparently due in court tomorrow, which is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. And let's see where the case goes. As I say, I'll keep an eye on it. If you enjoy 
my coverage of true crime, please give this video a thumbs up. You can also share it. And if you do, please include hashtag Grizzly True Crime so that everyone knows where to find this episode as well. And my closing thoughts for now on this case are, as much as we all want a knight in shining armor, a really good guy, be careful of those that have a big shiny good guy badge that they wear on their chest for all the world to see and that generally have a pattern of lying, cheating, manipulating, gaslighting, and all of that. Actions really do speak louder than words. Look at someone's actions. Words are cheap. And I guess there's two big lessons that we can learn from this case. Number one, trust your gut instinct. Her gut was telling her, something's off. Like, this feels like the past when he drugged me. This doesn't quite feel right. I'm not sure. She even confronted him at one point saying, you know, there's poisons that they can't pick up on these tests. So trust your gut and make your own smoothies. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.